another bad video and welcome to this humongous hippo dude i mean dudette whoa what's up with <laughs> the yeah oh you're like a girl hippo apparently i don't know you got the pink going on there on the nails uh hey i didn't have anything to do with that okay this is uh i know i've been caught on videos before uh doing that to poor uh, rhino i believe at one time but you know what i didn't have anything to do with this one please hippo tell him it wasn't me <laughs> hey well you guys welcome to another math video we are doing review for the test for chapter 10 this would be review video numero dos that's number two for you monolinguals, those English speakers. And I imagine there's going to be one more video after this. Let's go ahead and start covering page. Looks like 459. Here we go. Select the objects that hold the same amount of liquid as a 96 fluid ounce jug. Mark all that apply. Mark all that apply. Okay, so let's do that. We have three one-quart bottles. Ooh, two one-quart bottles. Two one-quart bottles. Oh, my goodness. There's so much here. Well, let's break this down. First thing is, we're back to those English units that uh, Mr. War says that he's not too crazy about because it does require a lot of memorizing. These kind of weird off numbers. And you heard me putting in a big plug for the metric system because it does make converting units much easier. But... It is what it is, right? As they say. So, with three one-quart bottles, we need to know how many fluid ounces are in one bottle. I think that was 32 ounces last time I checked. There's 32 ounces in one quart. Guess I need to start doing some math here. Well, three of them, if it were true, I should be able to take 32 times three then, right? And get 96. And voila! Yes, and I do actually get that. And so A is for awesome. Yeah. Woohoo. Yeah, you win. Okay. B, are you part of the family? Two one quart bottles. Well, look, we just figured out three was. Could two one quart bottles? No. So sorry. B, we're going right on by you. Get it? <laughs> okay. C, two one quart bottles. Okay, and two one pint bottles. Here we go with pints now. So there's 32 ounces in one quart. So I guess the question becomes how many ounces are in one pint? Hmm, I'm trying to remember. Hmm, now when I go out and I buy ice cream, ooh, Ben and Jerry's, oh, look at that, yes. Plug, I'm putting a plug. A plug for Ben and Jerry's. You know, they come in those little one pint containers. You know, you've got Chunky Monkey, Cherry Garcia. There's quite a few good flavors. I believe those are one pint. And that means... That's a pint. Two of those would make a quart. I don't know. I'm going to guess and say there's probably, what, eight? That doesn't sound right. Like 16 ounces in one pint? Oh, thanks. Sure. What do you mean I'm not smarter than a hippo? Well, I know I'm not smarter than a fifth grader, but smarter than a hippo? You're kind of pushing it there, my friend. I mean, Miss Hippo. Yeah. You know what? I think you need to chill out now. Just chill, okay? Calm, calm. Mm. All right. Thank you. Do some of your yoga exercises. Okay, so we come back. So we did, thanks to our little hippo friend. There are 16 ounces in one pint. And there's two pints here. That makes 32 ounces, which is the same as one quart. Plus, you have two one quarts over here. We're back to three. And as you can see, that would be a winner. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. I hippo now. Okay, going to teach us math. Why don't you just take the video, eh? Okay, just kidding. Uh, do I sound offended? I don't know. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one quart bottle and eight ounce fluid glasses. Okay, wow, eight, eight ounce. Well, that makes 64 ounces. 64 ounces, because eight times eight, I know my times table. And if we were to take 64 and then add another one quart that's listed there, look at here. 96 again, 96 so popular. Oh my goodness, it's like all of these are the answers, except for B. <laughs> How about E? Two eight ounce fluid glasses and two one pint bottles. You know what? You're not sounding like you're going to even cl be close. All right, 16 ounces and one pint. 16 times two would be 32, like above. Two eight ounce fluid glasses, well, eight times two is 16. Ah, you're not even going to come close. E, guess what? We're just going to eek right on by you. Get it? <laughs> okay. Anyway, Mr. Wara, what? Oh, my jokes are getting really, really, uh, okay. Sorry. Please don't throw any fruit at me. <gasps> okay. 
Now, let's move on down and see what else we've got coming. So, Lorena's backpack has a mass of 3,000 grams. What is the mass of Lorena's backpack in kilograms? Kilograms. Well, here we go with that chart again. For example, in this case, gram is our, kind of think of it as our base unit. And so, we have grams here. Now, if you were going to go smaller, I guess we could head to the, head to the right. I kind of think of going to the right. We end up with milligrams. Now, there are some place values in between, but we tend not to use that. The very large one on the other side is kilograms. So I kind of think of kilograms and milligrams kind of interesting because they both, kilo means 1,000 and milli, like a millipede, means 1,000, which I think millipedes are so cool. I just saw some on the trail just recently. Oh, they're so cool. I could have like a family of mil, what? Oh, I'm getting off track. I'm sorry. Okay. Back to the story. So here we have that 1,000 and 1,000, but kilograms are bigger. We need 1,000 grams to make one kilogram. It's a larger unit. Remember when we talked in our previous video, the larger the unit, if we're converting smaller to large, we need to divide. But if we're going from larger to small, remember we need to, that's right, multiply. In this case, we have the smaller unit going to the large, so we need to divide. And we need to take our 3,000 and divide by, because there's 1,000 in each, we're really taking 3,000 divided by the 1,000, which we would never really do because we have all these zeros, right? It kind of counts. That's just like saying 3 divided by 1. We have 3 powers of 10, so that 3,000 grams, right, divided by 1,000, yeah, it's just going to be 3 because when we divide, the decimal moves to the left three places, so we end up with 3 kilograms. Okay, a lot of work for that little problem. Just trying to do my job is Mr. Wara. The math teacher. Okay, so since Richard walks every day for exercise at a rate of one kilometer every 12 minutes, being here in the United States, it's uh, kind of hard to compute what that really means. One kilometer every 12 minutes. I don't know. Is that fast? Might be. At this rate, how many meters can Richard walk in one hour? Hmm. Explain how you found your answer. Okay, well, let's talk this one out because this is a metric system. First things first. We know how easy it is to convert now from a kilometer to a meter, just like a kilogram to a gram. We have a large unit here. The meter is the smaller unit. And if we're going to take our kilometer and turn it into meters, since kilometer is larger, we're going to have to multiply. And so we're going to take that one kilometer and we're going to multiply it by 1,000 because kilo means 1,000. So we're going to put here in my notes, so one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. Now, that lets me know at least what that conversion is. Now I look at it, it says, but at this rate, so there's a rate, how many meters can Richard walk in one hour? Well, if he's doing 1,000 meters in 12 minutes, what we need to know is how many 12 minutes are there in one hour? So we have yet another conversion here. Well, 12 minutes, you may know your times table. Because when I see 12 and I see one hour, one hour I see 60 minutes. So it might be a good idea if we have the exact same units. Yeah, good idea, Mr. Wara. So 12 minutes times something is going to equal 60 minutes. Do you have a number for me? Yeah, maybe you guys were thinking five. If you know your timetable and your 12s, I just think that's awesome because that's 60. So now you can kind of see we have five groups of these thousand meters every 12 minutes. Richard is going to walk 1,000 meters. He's going to do that like five times over in that one hour. So 1,000 plus 1,000. You get the idea we're making copies. We're just saying five times 1,000. So it's going to be 5,000 meters. Now, let's just explain your answer. I think I kind of did that. So this is what I decided to do. I decided to convert my kilometer into 1,000 meters. Just the way the steps I took, there are more than one way you could solve this problem. I wrote as a division as well. The other way that you may have solved this is to go ahead and just say there was five kilometers in that one hour, and then you would have taken that five kilometers and, of course, multiplied by 1,000 to get your 5,000 meters. And voila, we move on to the next problem. Let's go. Yeah. Part B. Suppose Richard walks one kilometer every 10 minutes. How many meters further can he walk in one hour at this new rate? And explain how you found your answer. It's a great question. This time we're going to sol solve it in a similar way. However, we're going to go ahead and just keep it in kilometers first. So if he can do one kilometer every 10 minutes, let's do the math. 
So if we're looking at 10 minutes, every 10 minutes, well, there's six copies of that in one hour. Because we could say that there's one hour, 60 minutes, divided by that 10 is going to equal six. So now we have six copies of that one kilometer, which means six kilometers, okay? Six kilometers because he can do one kilometer in every 10 minutes. Now, how many meters further can he walk? Well, first we need to know how many meters we have here. Well, this is really easy math. We, we don't need to write this out. There's 1,000 meters in every kilometer. So we're, we're talking here, we have 6,000 meters. We have 6,000 meters. How much farther was it? It was 1,000 meters. So let me go ahead and get my notes down. Well, here do you go. Here's my explanation. Can I say my favorite two words? Straightforward? It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! Whoa! My goodness, you're just getting bigger and bigger. What are you doing? You're like eating everything, uh, oh my, in sight or something? Look at that. Wow. And what is this? You got some, like, you got some babies down here. So, oh my goodness, you got like four little ones down here? Oh, wow. Very cool. You know, you guys are taking up a lot of space, though. No offense. So I'm going to really have to shrink you down like mini, mini size. There you go. I, I, I think maybe that will be all right. You're huge. I'm serious. You know what, uh, Miss Hippo? I don't know. You considered maybe, I don't know. Do you, you're not much of a carnivore either, huh? You eat pretty much plant life. I don't know why you're getting so big there. Oops, sorry, I forgot your eyelid there. <laughs> all right. Too much fun. I know. Nothing like playing around with these guys. Woohoo! Yeah. Okay, Mr. Wara, please. Okay, Beth filled 32 jars with paint. If each jar holds one pint of paint, how many gallons of paint did Beth use? Oh, she's going to tell me gallons. You know, I was about to say, I was getting ready for a really easy problem. You know, if each jar holds one pint of paint, how many pints, right? Yeah, 32. Oh, but no, the problem has to go into gallons. All right, here we go with our conversion chart. All right, Miss Hippo, I don't remember how many pints there are in a gallon. Can you help me out? Thank you. See, I knew you'd help me out. Okay, so we go back to there's two pints in a quart. So if there's two pints in a quart, there's four quarts in a gallon, we can multiply. So yeah, let's do show some math here. Basically, we're taking 32 pints, and if we were to divide that by, now that we determine there's eight pints in one gallon, well, we've just got 32 divided by eight. Eight will go in there. Yeah, it's going to go in there four times, so we have four gallons, right? And what's interesting, we are going from a smaller unit to a larger unit. When we go to a smaller unit to a larger unit, we do divide, so that much is true. All right, thank you, Miss Hippo. Sorry, yep, don't worry, your babies are fine. Okay, Griffin's driveway is 36 feet long. Choose the word and number to complete the sentence correctly. Okay, to convert 36 feet to yards, smaller to larger. So to convert 36 feet to yards, then we're going to, we just did it up here. Remember, we have to divide. That's right, circle, good old divide. 36 by, and then we need to know what the conversion is, how many feet in one yard, and there's three feet in one yard. It's pretty easy. Oh, there you are again. Oh my goodness, I'm seeing double. Okay, all right, are you coming down here again? Oh, you just want to keep an eye on your babies. Okay, that's fine, cool. Carlos bought five pounds of carrots. It says, how many ounces of carrots did he buy? Oh, and I have to know the ounces. Another conversion in English, oh my goodness. Okay. Thank you again, Miss Hippo. My goodness. Hey, you trying to rub it in? I'm doing the best that I can. Thanks, Miss Hippo. She's telling us that there's 16 ounces in one pound. So since we're going to a larger unit to a smaller unit, we're going to need to multiply. Since there's 16 ounces in every pound, we're going to multiply that by five. And you can see here, we're going to get 80. So we're going to get 80 ounces. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Hippo. All right, hopefully I'm not gonna need her anymore. This is getting kind of, you know, I'm really not smarter than a hippo here. Okay, Chandler, <laughs> Chandler has 824 millimeters of fabric. How many centimeters of fabric does Chandler have? 
Use the numbers and symbols on the tiles to write an equation to show the conversion. Okay, I'm not going to need you on this one here, little Miss, Miss Hippo. No, I'm not, because this is a metric system, and these are nice. So if I have 824, I might as well just go ahead and write my equation. 824 uses this guy right here. 824 millimeters. Now we have a smaller unit going into a larger unit because centimeters is a bit larger, but it's only larger by 10 times because centi means 100 and milli means 1000. So I'm going to divide by 10 is what I'm kind of thinking. And then if I divide that by 10, then I can go ahead and change this to 82.4. Tell me that isn't a great way to convert one unit to another when it comes to, yeah, oh, I put it in here. So Shanna has. I'm just going to rewrite this, 82.4 centimeters of fabric. Yeah, I am smarter than a hippo. I'm smarter than a hippo. No, okay. Glenn needs to cut pieces of ribbon that are each one meter long to make ribbon keychains. Okay, if he has three pieces of ribbon that are each one decameter long, how many one meter pieces of ribbon can he cut? Really? A decameter? Okay. Who uses that unit of measure? Apparently, go math. Okay. Not common. We don't really use that. Uh, I just happen to know. The only reason why I know what that one is because I know decimeter is smaller than one meter and a decameter is 10 times greater than one meter. That's just not a common unit. But let's go ahead and deal with it. So if we have one meter long, I see here, to make the ribbon keychains, if he has three pieces of ribbon that are each cut one decameter long. So this one decameter, so that you know then, would be equal to 30 meters. Pretty long. Who <laughs> has ribbon that long? 30 meters. So if I'm going to have to, if, if, if he's going to cut three pieces of that, oh, what did I just say? I just said 30. Ah, my mind's moving too fast. I mean, that's the answer. It's going to be 30 pieces. Sorry. It's going to be one decameter is equal to 10 meters. Oops. Little, little mistake there. Okay. Remember, you didn't see anything. Okay. Shh. Get the eraser, Mr. Wara. Maybe nobody will notice. There. It's like, like it was never there. Okay, guys. Keep say, Keep turning around. Don't look. Okay. Okay, are they looking yet? No, okay. There you go. Just like I said, one decameter is equal to 10 meters. So if you have uh, basically three pieces of ribbon that are each that length, that means you have 10, 20, 30. You're basically saying 10 times three, right? Wouldn't that be like the easy way to think of that? 10 meters times three. So with your 10 meters here, you're gonna have one decameter long. Then you're gonna have 10 and 10. What, oh, oh. The video, it's that means it's coming to an end, my friends. Oh my goodness, I was just getting warmed up. Anyway, great to see the Miss Hippo again, and uh, you know, my friends, there'll be another one coming. All right, so now live long and prosper.